Hello, I am Ahmad and in this video we are going to talk about instability of uh, determinate beams. We are going to uh, understand when the load is increased in one structure, specifically a determinate beam, what would happen if one single point of the beam becomes plastic. So in the other videos, earlier we learned how to calculate the uh, plastic bending moment in different cross sections and also different materials. Now we are going to check if this is applied to one single beam, which in this example is determinate what would happen after that. So let's have a simple beam. So assume that here we have L and the other part is 2L. And at this distance, we have the force P applied at point C of beam AB, which is a simple beam. And here we have one cross section, which is uh, whatever it can be for simplicity. Here we are assuming that it's a rectangle cross section, which W plastic is BHS square divided by 4. And M plastic will be W plastic times Fy, assuming that the material is homogeneous with the, the same behavior, intention, and compression. If we sketch the bending moment diagram of this uh, beam, M max will be PL 2L divided by 3L, so it will be 2PL over 3. So the maximum bending moment happens in the point C, which is uh, the point that the force is applied. Now, if we increase the force in a way that this 2PL over 3 equals to M plastic, then that force is called P plastic. What would happen after that? So we increase the bending moment until point C becomes plastic. If we want to have numbers, let's have B is 60 millimeter, H is 120 millimeter, and let's go with the material FY 210 megapascal. As a result, we can write down that WPL is 6120 squared divided by 4, and it will be 216,000 cubic millimeter and M plastic will be W plastic times Fy will be 45.36 kN. It is good if we also understand what would be the elastic force in this case. So W elastic is BH squared divided by 6, 14, 4000 and M elastic will be W elastic times Fy which is 30.24. So when in beam AB we start to increase P, as far as P is small, then the behavior of the beam in the entire length of AB will be completely elastic. Gradually, it by increasing P, uh, the stress in the point C will increase until the bending moment at point C approaches to M elastic first. So let's assume that L is 1.5 meters. Now, by increasing force P, the maximum bending moment in the beam will uh, be closer and closer to M elastic first. So what would happen in the first step when we increase the load? 2 PL over 3 will be as same as 30.24 kN meter. L is 1.5 meters as a result. P, which is called P elastic, will be 30.24 kN. It means that if the force is less than 30.24 kN, then the entire beam will be completely elastic and all the points from A to B will be in the elastic phase with the linear behavior. But when it comes to when P exceeds 30.24 kN, it, st it starts to be plastic partially in the point that there is maximum bending moment until the entire section in point C will be plastic. 
So it happens when 2PL over 3 equals to 45.36 kilonewton meter. In this case, the plastic will be 45.36 kilonewton. So it means that when the load is less than 30.24, the behavior of this the, the beam completely is linear. When it's between 30.24 up to 45.36, now the behavior is partially plastic. And when the load approaches to 45.36 kilonewton, then we have one single point which is completely plastic. As far as when the section is completely plastic, it doesn't have any rigidity in terms of rotation. This point becomes a hinge which is called plastic hinge because it became plastic due to excessive load. So now if we want to sketch the beam, if P is less than 30.24 kilonewton, so we have completely elastic behavior in all sections. If P is between 30.24, 24 kilonewton and 45.36 kilonewton partially plastic so it starts from point c that some part of the section become plastic and when p is greater than 45.36 kilonewton now at point c no rotational resistance this is called a hinge behavior as far as this happened by uh, becoming plastic, then this point is called plastic hinge. Now, if you want to sketch the beam after approaching to this load, here is the ideal uh, beam after becoming hinge. So this is plastic hinge. Now we know that if we have three hinges in a row in one element, the a structure is not a stable so then we can sketch after this point the structure starts to collapse and this is called mechanism so when the structure does not have enough resistance in terms of uh, transferring the load to the support and it starts to collapse due to excessive load it is not about buckling it's about becoming plastic and this structure is called a mechanism. So uh, when we have a determinate structure, then the most likely only one plastic hinge would happen. And you can see that here after the point, after point C becomes plastic, the structure is completely unstable. Uh, prior to becoming plastic or becoming mechanism, we can determine also what is the length of the beam which is in a partially plastic behavior so for the same beam if we sketch the bending moment 1.5 meters and the other part is 3 meters and here is the bending moment diagram so when p is 45.24 or 36 36 then the bending moment here will be 45.36 while elastic bending moment was 30.24 kilonewton meter so here we can find out in which length of the structure the bending moment is still less than 30.24 kilonewton so here is x1 and here is x2 for example we can go with the similar triangle principle or we can go with the uh, writing the equation of bending moment. So here, if we write the support reaction, 45.36 times 1.5 divided by 4.5, 15.12 kilonewton and the other one will be 30.24 kilonewton. So in each case, we can determine what is the x1 and also what is l 4.5 meters minus x2 so x1 if we cut it from here m will be 30.24 times 
x1 and we want to have 30.24 kilonewton meter as a result x1 will be one meter if we solve with the similar triangle also we will get the same result here if we write the principle for this triangle and this one 45.36 kilonewton meter divided by 1.5 meters is the same as 30.25 kilonewton meter divided by x1 x1 will be one meter the same also for the other part for the other side so m will be 15.12 times 4.5 minus x2 equals to 30.24 and from here we can calculate 30.24 divided by 15 divided by 15.12 4.5 minus so it will be 2.5 meters so x2 will be 2.5 this is one meter this is 2.5 meters so here it means that in this length two meters from the end their structure is completely elastic also in the first one meter of the beam the structure is completely elastic and here these two parts are partially elastic this is applied to the moment slightly before the structure starts to collapse so it means that this point of uh, c is close to e plastic which is 45.36 kilonewton so that is the moment that the structure starts to collapse and this is called mechanism uh, when the beam is determinate it is um, also very uh, simple to determine when the structure becomes a mechanism because uh, we have usually maximum bending moment at one point or uh, if we have for example a situation that the beam is determinate and the maximum bending moment uh, occurs in two places at the same time then we might have more than one plastic hinge uh, that is a special case but typically we have one maximum bending moment and that point would become plastic and then it turns uh, the structure from being stable to uh, unstable now let's have one more example in this regard assuming that we have the same cross section but this time we it is under distributed load q with the length of four and we have m elastic 30.24 kilonewton meter and m plastic 45.36 kilonewton meter as we know the bending moment diagram in this beam will be ql square divided by eight and it's positive so when ql square divided by eight is as same as 30.24 kilonewton meter by substituting l equals four meters q which is called q elastic will be 30.24 times 8 divided by 4 square will be 15.12 kilonewton per meter and when it is the same as plastic bending moment u will be 22.68 kilonewton per meter again here when the load is increased if the distributed load is less than 15.12 kilonewton per meter the behavior of the beam is completely elastic if the load is increased between 15.12 to 22.68 then the behavior at uh, one point starts to be partially plastic and gradually by increasing the load uh, more points are going to be partially plastic until q approaches to 22.68 meaning that this is the moment that we have one single plastic hinge and it will be in the center as we have maximum bending moment in the center of this beam so again we will have a mechanism after the load uh, passes 22.68 kilonewton per meter 
So also here we can determine what would be the length of the beam which is partially plastic after the load approaches to 22.68. And here we have the bending moment diagram QLS squared divided by 8 and the support reaction is QL divided by 2. Now if the bending moment at this point is 45.36 kN meter so we need to determine uh, at what point or points uh, the bending moment is greater than M elastic. So M elastic is 30.24 kN meter and here we can see that we have again two points x1 and x2 we want to determine these two points so the simple way is to write the bending moment equation bending moment equation will be ql divided by 2 times x minus qx squared divided by 2 now we want to have 30.24 kN meter and q is now if the bending moment here is 45.36 it means that the load approaches to 22.68 kN per meter which is the plastic uh, value so 22.68 and then L divided by 2 which is 2 meters times x minus x squared divided by 2 so here 30.24 divided by 22.68 it will be 4 over 3, 2x minus x squared divided by 2. Or we can rewrite this equation by multiplying by 2. And it will be x squared minus 4x plus 8 divided by 3 equals to 0. Now x will be 4 plus minus x square root 16 minus 4 times 8 over 3 divided by 2. So this will be 4 plus minus 4 s square root of 1 minus 2 over 3 divided by 2. So it will be 2 plus minus 2, 1 over 3. So 2 plus 2 divided by s square root of 3, 3.15 meters and 0 0.84 meters. So it means that we have uh, two points that the bending moment is exactly uh, elastic bending moment so here if q is q plastic which is 22.68 kN meter then at two points one at 0 0.84 and the other one at 3.15 so this length will be partially plastic so to finish this video let's have a, a little bit uh, not very simple beam uh, to finalize this video to transfer the message what I expected to uh, deliver so assume that we have one support here and then one support here and one support also here and let's assume that the load is coming at this point let's say this is P a a 2a and 4a a b c are the supports and point d is the uh, mechanical hinge that we already have so now we are going to check if we increase the force what point would become plastic first and then what would happen to the structure after uh, approaching the load to that limit so first we need to analyze the beam we have CY, EY, and AY. So I take the moment about D equals to zero to its right. So it means that I'm taking the moment from here. Then it will be minus P times A plus CY times 2A equals to zero. So CY will be P divided by two. Now this time I'm taking the moment by respect of a in the entire length of the beam by times 4a minus p times 7a plus cy times 8a equals to 0 
and we already determined cy which is p divided by 2 so by will be 7 minus 4 divided by 4 which is 0 0.75 or 3 over 4 p then we need to write down the last equation sigma fy equals to 0 so then it will be ay plus by plus cy minus p equals to 0 cy is p divided by 2 by is 0 0.75 p as a result ay will be 1.25 minus 25 0.25 p so it means that here the support reaction will be 0 0.25 p this value 0 0.75 p and cy is 0 0.5 p upward shear force so 0 0.25 p in the negative direction constant up to point b then 0 0.75 positive then minus p negative now we can determine the area 0 0.25 it is negative times 4a so it will be pa negative then up to the mechanical hinge b times a 2a times 0 0.5 p and then here it will be 0 0.5 pa and here minus 0 0.5 pa and here from zero this is bending moment diagram to minus pa plus pa in the mechanical hinge it will be zero bending moment it continues to the 0 0.5 pa and then with the negative value it will be zero so here we can see that the maximum bending moment happens in the point b which is not necessarily in the point that we applied the load p so maximum bending moment is p times a and if it is m elastic then we can determine p elastic which is m elastic divided by a or it can be m plastic so then p plastic will be m plastic divided by a now it's the same concept uh, like what we uh, determined earlier if you want to calculate the length of the beam which is plastic or partially plastic you just need to sketch the p elastic or m, uh, m elastic in the bending moment diagram and find out what the length of elastic and plastic or partially plastic of the beam are so that's the concept of how to calculate the uh, load of which the structure becomes plastic in this video we introduced how a beam can become a mechanism which means that it starts to be in a stable or collapse not due to losing the strength or not due to buckling for example just because the load is excessive and the one point in this case would become plastic and then we do not have resistance in the entire structure in this video we went through the determinate beams and we determined the elastic load the plastic load and also the length of the beam after it starts to be partially plastic how to determine the elastic length and plastic length or partially plastic length thank you for watching see you in next video bye